previously we configured this topology with pap authentication on this link. Now to reset the config on an interface such as serial two slash zero, I'm simply going to change the encapsulation to HDLC to remove all PPP config. So I'll do that on both sides. So show run interface serial two slash zero. You can see there is no PPP config. Do show run interface serial two slash zero. No PPP config. We're back to using HDLC and we can see that by typing do show interface. So there's the command. Interface is up up. Encapsulation is HDLC. So what we'll do now is type PPP authentication, or before that encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication chap. Now the writers use their host names for authentication by default. So we're gonna say username R2, because that's the host name of this router. Password Cisco. The passwords have to be the same on both sides. So on this side, we're gonna say username R1 password Cisco. And that's assuming that we're using two-way chap authentication. In other words, the passwords have to be the same on both sides if both sides are authenticating each other. So interface serial two slash zero, encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication chap. I'll shut the interface down and then no shut it to force them to renegotiate. You can see the OSPF relationships are coming up, interfaces come up. So show interface serial two slash zero. Interfaces up up, LCPs have been negotiated and NCPs have been negotiated. The same on this side, show interface serial two slash zero. Interfaces up up. LCPs have been negotiated. NCPs have been negotiated. Router two, as an example, can ping router one. And as a final test, I'll get PC one to ping PC two, which it now can do. Just took it a while to do op requests on both sides, but this PC can ping all the way to PC2. So let's do a debug. So debug PPP authentication to see what's happening. And then what I'll do is shut the interface down and no shut it. But before I press enter to no shut it, let's run a Wireshark capture so that we can see what's going on. So no shut on this interface. Okay, so firstly, on the debug on router one, we can see authorization is required. We can see challenges taking place. So there's a challenge from router one, outgoing. There's an incoming challenge from router two. Here's a response from router one and a response from router two. The router is gonna use the host name to do the authentication. Scrolling down, we can see the responses here once again. Chap login request. The login response passed. LCP can be negotiated and NCPs can be negotiated. Everything succeeds. And we can see that OSPF has formed a neighbor relationship. So show interface serial two slash zero. Interface is up up. LCP is open, NCPs have been negotiated. In the Wireshark capture, here's the LCP configuration requests. So there's an authentication, in this case using CHAP or Challenge Handshake authentication protocol from the one side and from the other side. They agree that they're using the same LCPs Authentication is CHAP, and there's the magic number. 
So here's the challenge. Notice a value. Here's the challenge. Here's the responses. And what I want to point out is notice there is no password. There's a challenge from both sides because we're using two-way chap authentication. Both sides are authenticating each other. And here are the responses. But it's a hash. It's not the actual password that's sent across the wire, unlike PAP. There are the success messages. Here are the configurations for IPCP, IPv6 CP, in other words, the NCPs, here CDP. And if we scroll down, we can see IP version 6 messages and OSPF messages as the link comes up and the various higher layer protocols negotiate things with one another. After that, we have echo requests and echo replies. So that's an example with CHAP. The big difference between CHAP and PAP is notice the passwords are not sent across the wire. We have a hash of the password and challenge. We don't send the actual password across the wire. 